Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, my dear teachers and friends. My name is Tani. Today, I would like to tell you a story about a brave heroine from Saparwa Island of Indonesia, Martha Christina Tiaha. I hope you can enjoy it, and here's my story. It was a fine day out, and Captain Paulus Tiahu had just arrived home from his duty as a warrior in the war against the colonial cruelty of the people of Netherlands in the early 19th century. With a red band around the upper part of her head that she always wore, a young lady named Martha greeted her father in blazing pride. I would like to do the lorry walk for the country, father, she asked. To which her father replied, Everybody who works under the spirit towards the country's freedom is working for the country, Martha. Everybody. With all respect and inspiration towards her father, long story short, Martha was encouraged to be a part of the battlefield warrior. It was in the age of 17 when Martha, along with her father and several others of war leaders, came into a tight discussion in the middle of the dark forest to make a strategy. The village of O, in the southeast of the Saparwa Island, was yet another victim, not a war. Not a confrontation, not a fight, which means not one, but many more strikes of swords. Shouts of painful cries, bullets passing through the head of the innocent, deeds with no mercy, homes exploding with heart-breaking fires, and lost children in desperate search for their mothers. The unforgiving inhuman dead soldiers burned the village until all its homes were as flat as the ground. Seeing this, along with her father, Martha had sworn to never give up. In the midst of the chaos, of the uncontrollable world, and in the midst of the Molokas fall, Martha steadied herself. She looked around and shouted to the village of all. This is our land. This is the land on which we were born. We cannot let those colonialists take it away from us. And so the Molokas were challenged to be filled up again. They stood up for the sake of the land's dignity and attacked back. Liberty or death? So was their motto. It was done to keep them up. Martha focused on the women, the gender of her kind. But were helpless and told them to get back up. We were born here, and therefore we shall be sacrificial willing to make our permanent ends on this part of the earth. It's much better to die and struggle against them than become their bloody slaves. Martha Christina Tiahu and the fighters were successfully defeated by the foes. Some were killed, and some were thrown away to the island of Java. How much more miserable it was for Martha to see that her father was one of the very people threatened to do so. From a distance, bordered by a barrier, she saw it all. How they beat his father and treated him in the most disrespectful ways. The God, my father! In exchange, let me be punished to death. Let me die for him. Please. She wept in her heart. But to the Dutch, the life of a father to her daughter meant nothing. They had no feelings, no mercy. It was their job not to grant for Martha's wish. In a matter of seconds, which was the most meaningful second of Martha's life, the sound was finally heard. Bam! A bullet had gone past the captain's head. For a moment, she felt nothing. She saw nothing. She heard nothing. The young lady's heart had been ripped apart. Did you see that? It was a dream, wasn't it? It was my father lying down there. Where did my good man go? And so was the end. To the hero, it been everything to Martha. The one who helped her her life, struggled, and faith will no longer be alongside her, but to have her on the shoulders, and say that together they will do it. Together they will bring the enemy down. Together the Molokas will stand up. After her father's death, Martha Christina Tihahu entered the forest with her troops. She wanted to continue her father's struggle. Unfortunately, the troops of the Dutchman could seize her troops. 
and the government of the Dutchman, sent Marta Christina to Jaffa Island. Fortunately, Marta Christina was sick on board. She didn't want to eat and drink, even she refused to take medicine. So Marta Christina was seriously ill. And finally, she passed away. Then Dutchman on the ship buried her dead body into the sea between Blue Island and Tiga Island. Following independence, the Indonesian government declared a Maluku freedom fighter a national heroine, and her death anniversary on 2nd of January is commemorated as Marta Christina Tiahahu Day. Everyone, that is the end of my story about a brave heroine from Saparwa Island of Indonesia, a brave lady who left her family and left to fight the Dutch, Marta Christina Tiahahu. I hope you enjoy my story and thank you for listening this. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.